This is work that I am uh, in the in the process of uh, finishing with uh, Timothy Liu, who's sitting up here, who will answer all hard questions, and Steve Utkus from the Vanguard Group. And in fact, we owe a great deal of thanks to the Vanguard Group for having provided um, not only the insights, but the basic data with which we've been able to carry out this research. Um, and then, of course, we're very grateful also to the Financial Literacy Center for having funded the research that, that we're so excited about. So let me tell you briefly what we're going to be looking at today, and that's the issue of 401k loans. Now, um, many, many millions of American workers have 401k plans or the equivalent in the nonprofit sector, um, and these plans cover uh, roughly 62 million workers. Um, one of the interesting features of these plans, and in fact one that I wasn't very much aware of until I started working on the topic, is the fact that people can borrow against their, their balances. Um, as we note here, something like three quarters of the plans actually allow more than one loan or at least one loan. And many, many participants take multiple loans from their plans. And so the question we're trying to get at is why do DC plans allow loans? What happens when, they, when people do borrow from themselves, in a sense? And in sp specifically in this case, we're focusing on what happens when people terminate their jobs they have a loan outstanding, and what are the consequences of that? And we're just getting a bit into that, that broader research area, but let me start with the first question, which is why do people, why do companies allow loans? And there's a bit of evidence, some of which uh, I've worked on with Steve Utkus also, um, suggesting that many plan sponsors are interested in providing loans because they want workers to participate in the 401k plans in the first place. And the concern is that if you offer plans, plan participation, to low-income workers, maybe they'll feel too liquidity constrained, too cash constrained, to be able to want to contribute. So the notion is if you put a loan in place, it's a safety valve so that people can borrow from it if they really get into trouble. Non-discrimination rules also play a role, 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 of course. If you have a plan where low-income employees are not participating in sufficient numbers with sufficient dollars of contributions, then the high-paid employees may also not be able to contribute as much as they want. So this is a, allegedly a, a reason that loans have been put in place. And the evidence suggests that it, loans do tend to raise participation rates and boost contribution rates, so there seems to be some backing for that presumption. Now, plan loans are quite attractive. It turned out that one of my colleagues at Wharton actually told me as I was working on this project, yes, he too had taken out a loan, um, in his case, for, um, for purchasing housing. It turns out that loans are pretty easy to get. There's no credit check because it's your own money after all. It's fairly cheap to do. The loan is taken out pre-tax. You have to pay back out of your paycheck uh, out of after-tax earnings, but you're paying the interest to yourself. And so it's very appealing from that point of view. Most employers also charge fairly low interest rates for the loans. And as I say here, there's a five-year repayment period for a typical loan or even a 30-year for a home residence loan. So it's a pretty good deal for many people. There are caps and limits, however. In fact, it's interesting you can take up to half of your account balance or $50,000, whichever is less. And the 50,000 ceiling has not changed since 1980. So it's interesting that that's one of those things that uh, has obviously been eroded over time. Usually employers will say you have to take a minimum of $1,000. Typically, one loan is permissible, but some allow three or more. And we'll come back to that point in a minute. Now, as I said a moment ago, if you leave the employer, you must repay that loan in full or by the end of the next quarter, or the loan is considered defaulted. And so this is the concern we have. If you default, you have to pay income tax on the full amount of the loan, plus a 10% penalty. And so that's really the punitive aspect of the loan to make sure people don't do it too lightly. In our earlier work, we've looked at what determines plan borrowing, and we found, for example, that the more 
that the, if the employer permits or the plan permits numerous loans to be taken, people tend to be more likely to borrow. It's sort of an interesting plan design feature. If they're web linked and increasingly employees are connected to the web and manage their accounts online, that tends to make loans more prevalent. We looked at whether or not the interest rate that was charged influences people's willingness and, and likelihood of taking a loan. No effect there. Some other things we found were that low income people, people with low assets, are less likely to borrow. Women are more likely to borrow. And there's sort of an age hump shape pattern with age. But here what we're looking at is what happens when they terminate their jobs. Who defaults and what seems to be driving that? We're looking at liquidity and credit constraints as one major um, suggestion. That is, people that take loans may have insufficient assets to pay back the loans when they terminate. And so that's at least one thing we'll be looking at to see are, is it low income people, low wealth people that are the most likely to default. We're also looking at plan design. So if, you've t if you, the plan allows you to take multiple loans and you're likely to take more, if you, or you're more likely to take them if multiple are permitted, that may influence defaults. And then we're also trying to get a sense of how influential the macroeconomy is. That is, during times of high unemployment rate, does this tend to drive defaults? Now, I'll say at the outset, our data set finishes in the middle of 2008. So we haven't yet extended the analysis to the more recent period. Hopefully, we'll be able to do that in the future. So you recall that you have to pay this penalty. When you leave the job, you have to repay it in full or else it's considered defaulted. So let's take a little look at some of the characteristics of our folks. In the first column, we've got the folks who are defaulting when they terminate with a loan. In the second column, the characteristics of the people who repay when they terminate with the loan. And one thing that, of course, you'll notice readily is that the household income is somewhat lower for people that default than the other folks. The wealth is a little bit lower. There are more people in the low wealth category. The account balance is lower, but the loan balance is about the same. So it's basically going to be low income, low wealth people who are more likely to default. The age is not that different. Uh, fraction male, not that different. Um, if you look at the number of loans taken, uh, what you see is that there's slightly higher default probabilities for people who are allowed more loans, who take more loans, and the web registration is not super different. If you look at the loan patterns, and this is, I think, an interesting outcome, um, what you see is that in the top row, about a fifth of the participants have loans at any given time. And this is uh, through the three years of the data period that we've looked at that about 12% of the borrowers terminate with a loan, but the default rate conditional on terminating with a loan is about 80%, right? So this is a very high statistic. On the other hand, if you take the default rate as a percent of those who have a loan outstanding, it's about 10, 12%. So whether you think it's high or low depends on whether you look at the percentage of those who terminate with a loan or the percentage of people who have a loan. So slightly different numbers. Now, in this graph, what we look at is those, the fraction of those who fully default, conditional on taking a loan and terminating. And what we see is that there's a lot more fully defaulted uh, population in the category where you could take more than one loan, where it was allowed. So it, there does seem to, to be something going on here. It, from a plan design point of view, what it suggests is if an employer wants to reduce the likelihood of people taking a loan and defaulting at termination, maybe capping it at one loan at a time would be a good outcome. Um, here we just depict briefly the marginal effects of determination of different, the determinants of different 401k loans in a regression analysis. And you see again, people who are more likely to default are people with low and medium income vis-a-vis -vis high, the reference category. People with a high loan account balance are much less likely to default, uh, but people that have a high loan balance and multiple loans are more likely to default. So just briefly in sum. What are we seeing? There does seem to be some evidence of liquidity constraints driving defaults. That is, people who are lower income, lower wealth, 
lower account balance are more likely to default. Um, Plan design also plays a role. And I think that's interesting from the policy point of view if we're trying to understand how to potentially protect employees more from ending up in a default situation. The macro effects we found were not significant. Again, we only analyzed the data through the middle of 2008. We have obviously a much more, uh, much more variability in the data, as economists like to say, from 2008 to the present, and we're hoping to do that second second bit of analysis as well. So bottom line, so about 20% of the active participants have loans, about 12% leave the job with a loan. The vast majority of those, however, terminate and default. And so the default rate among all borrowers is about 10%, but the default rate on those who terminate with a loan is about 80%. How to reduce defaults if you would wish to do that? maybe restrict the number of loans, the size of the loans, and possibly allow people to continue to repay on the loans even after they leave their jobs. Now, of course, that would have some cost consequences because the plan administrator and the plan sponsor would have to track people and make sure the repayments continued. So that's not too necessarily a simple or cost-free fix. As I say, it may uh, raise administrative costs. So let me stop there. Thank you very much, and I look forward to Sarah's comments. <laughs>